And thank you to everyone who's presented today, who's been a part of the panel discussions. It's been a, a really fascinating day, full of great insights and some, some really good discussions. And hopefully I can add to that with some of our latest numbers and thoughts on audio market performance during and post COVID. 2020 has been a, a tough year for all of us around the world in, in so many ways. And we've seen huge numbers of people turning to audio as an escape from this in these unusual times. And, and this is shown um, by the chart on screen now. This data is taken from our audio tech lifestyles research, which was in the field in April and May during the height of lockdown in, in most of the world. And it, it shows some of the popular ways of listening to, to audio during COVID and, and com compared to pre-lockdown. Music streaming saw the, the biggest increase with 43% of respondents claiming that they listened to more music streaming during lockdown. And indeed, 17% of respondents signing up to a music subscription service during lockdown, which really demonstrates the, the desire to fill more of our newfound free time with audio. But other content sorts of big increases too. So music videos on YouTube, um, that, that increased 32%, podcasts up 30%, and, and even radio um, holding its own with a 28% with a increase. And where we see demand for audio content growing, we also see demand for audio hardware doing well. So H1 2020 was, was down very slightly in volumes for the core categories we track at Future Source on, on a quarterly basis. But actually, in, in terms of value, we saw a double digit year on year increase, which is really impressive when you consider the, the, the size of the economic downturn. And, and even more encouragingly, Q2 actually outperformed Q1. Q2, at the height of lockdown, people were buying more audio devices and spending more on those devices. It, we at FutureSource have been touting audio as, as, a C, as a key CE category for years now. And the, the strength of both the content industry and the hardware industry during COVID really demonstrates how integral audio now is to our day-to-day -day lives. True wireless has very much been the key growth area during headphones in the past few years, and COVID has just accelerated this trend. The, the numbers themselves are really stark. In H1 this year, 63% of total headphones value was just true wireless headphones. And that, that's up significantly year on year from an already very impressive 37% in H1 2020. Now, as the current hot audio product, True Wireless was always posed to, uh, poised to perform quite well in any economic uh, downturn. But the unique circumstances of lockdown and physical, dis and physical distancing has seen virtual communication with friends and family booming. Obviously, a lot of us are working from home regularly now. And True Wireless is the form factor of choice for, for these applications. You know, we like True Wireless because it's, it's very good for calls it's a subtle device, it's very comfortable, you can wear it for a long period of time. And over the last year or so, a lot of the new releases have had active noise cancelling built in, which is obviously great for, for COVID. Um, you know, it, it blocks out noise in the house, the neighbours, the kids, so you can focus on your work. Looking at, at the next five years, we, we, we certainly expect this to continue. You know, true wireless really has been a phenomenon in the last few years but we see the future potential being even bigger. It really is difficult to overstate what a game changer True Wireless is for, for the headphones market. There are so many mind boggling facts and figures I could throw out there, but one of my favorites is that the True Wireless market alone in 2020 is set to be worth more than the entire headphones market was in just 2018. And 2018 itself was a fantastic year for headphones, uh, growing 35% growing on 2017. Over-ear headphones certainly do have a future. We expect them to remain the preferred form factor for entertainment um, as, as the, the physical size of these devices means that it's much easier to fit in more acoustic components and offer a more feature-rich product and the most premium experience. However, with true wireless headphones really penetrating all price points, um, putting all kinds of different features in, into the headphones now, we do expect that both on-ear and, and in-ear in non-true wireless headphones 
are going to suffer quite significantly moving forward with true true wireless really cannibalizing both of those product categories within the speaker market we've seen a, a big discrepancy in, in performance by product so far this year with wi-fi speakers doing really well while bluetooth speakers have suffered slightly Pre-COVID, uh, Wi-Fi speakers, especially those with smart technology, were very much the, the, the hot product in wireless speakers. And again, COVID has just exacerbated this. These products are perfectly suited for our current lifestyles where we're spending a lot of time at home anyway. They're very affordable. So even, even in times of economic concern, smart speakers are, are, are very, very accessible. And they were generally bought online even before COVID. So the physical retail uh, closures we've seen in, in much of the world hasn't harmed Wi-Fi speakers and, and especially smart speakers um, too badly. Smart displays have had a particularly good start to the year, up over 200% year on year. It's not surprising, you know, with, with video calling booming during lockdown, people are using smart displays for, for some of this. And conversely, on, on the other side, Bluetooth speakers have, have suffered quite badly. Yeah, Bluetooth speakers rely on portability and, and outdoor use cases as their key USP versus Wi-Fi speakers. And with so many of us spending so much time indoors uh, this year, that, 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 that's really impacted the Bluetooth speaker market. Looking to, to the future in terms of a, a longer term COVID impact, we do think that people who bought a smart speaker for the first time um, because of lockdown, because of COVID, are, aren't going to go back in the future. Smart speakers and smart displays probably haven't yet been the, the revolutionary product, which many thought they could have been a few years ago. But usage does hold up really well over time. People, Once people buy these devices, they, they do keep using them. And it, it's mostly for listening to music. It's mostly for fairly basic functionality rather than any advanced voice assistant or, or AI functions. But the usage does hold up over time. And we actually expect that Bluetooth speakers are, are set to bounce back reasonably strongly in, in the medium term. For all of the reasons why, why they have suffered so badly during COVID are, are very much short-term reasons. Uh, they're very much factors related to do with the pandemic. So, so we are optimistic that people are still going to want portable, easy to use, basic music playback devices in the future when, when this is all behind us. And we've even seen that in our early Q3 numbers, which, which do show quite a, quite a reasonable bounce back, certainly compared to, to, compared to the H1 figures there. Now, both headphones and then wireless speakers have seen COVID really accelerating existing trends in the market. But for home cinema, we expect a fundamental change as a result of COVID. During lockdown, cinemas have obviously suffered significantly. Our current forecast is that box office uh, spend is going to be down 61% this year. And the big winner from this is the streaming video on demand companies, the Netflixes, the Prime videos, the, the, the Disney's of the world. People are watching far more content, unsurprisingly, in, in lockdown. These s companies are booming, and that's having a positive impact on hardware as well. TVs are doing very well. Home cinema speakers, and especially subwoofers, are, are showing a positive performance. But soundbars really are the star here. Soundbars are, are very much a mature category. Before COVID, we, we were looking at pretty consistent, low single-digit year-on-year growth figures. But again, our early Q3 numbers show that so something upwards of 25% year on year growth for soundbars, which really is in incredible for such a mature product category. Again, looking longer term, the content from these um, SVOD companies is becoming more and more high end. It's no longer just people watching reruns of Friends on Netflix. They're now also watching Oscar nominated movies like The Irishman, like Marriage Story. And consumers are going to want a premium experience to go along with these premium movies. Um, we, we also expect consumers who bought their first soundbar during lockdown, the vast majority of those are never going to go back to using built-in TV speakers, especially if built-in TV speakers uh, continue to get worse and worse as TV size, as TVs get thinner and thinner. 
And it's also worth noting that for, for such a mature product, home cinema is, ha has relatively low penetration across the world. In North America and Western Europe, very much leading the way. But even there, only one in five large screen TVs is connected to a home cinema device. And that number's far low in the rest of the world at just three and a half percent. So there remains massive, massive opportunity in, in, in the soundbar market, especially in, in developing markets. Now, all, all, all of these trends I've just talked about to an extent can be seen as part of the larger trend of audio hardware demand being driven by an increasingly versatile, uh, increasingly, increasingly versatile number of use cases. Much of this is still entertainment, just moving beyond music. Home cinema has obviously always been linked to TV and movies, but one of the surprise results from last year's audio tech lifestyles was how many consumers were using their headphones while watching uh, their televisions. And actually this was replicated in this year's research with over 50% of consumers, at least occasionally, um, using their headphones while watching television. Gaming is another key use case for, head for headphones. Gaming's obviously been booming during COVID, and this is this is um, specialist gaming headsets, but this is also standard headphones being used for gaming, and this is obviously especially uh, prevalent among young people, the consumers of tomorrow. We've seen a, a similar trend in, in the hot smart speaker product, the the smart display. You know, consumers are definitely using this device to to listen to a lot of music. But there are many key visual use cases, such as watching on demand TV, watching short form videos, but also watching um, instructional videos, you know, such as, as recipe for a kitchen assistant or, or working out with a smart display. And that's that's a, another trend we've really seen in 2020 is use cases extending beyond entertainment. So the, the, the top reason uh, to buy a headphone during lockdown was because people anticipated they'd be listening to more music, but not far behind this was the fact that people didn't want to be disturbed while they were working from home. And again, not far behind this was making calls while working from home. And we certainly expect this to continue in the future. Again, back to smart speakers, they're already a crucial part of the wider smart home ecosystem. And smart homes is one of the categories with real growth potential in CE over the next five, 10 years. If you look at the new smart speaker releases over the last few months from Amazon, Google, and Apple, all of them are touting their smart home capabilities highly. And Amazon's fourth gen Echo even has a built-in Zigbee smart home hub. So while music listening is for now the, the key use case of, of smart speakers, there's still a lot of optimism that it's going to help push smart home in, in the longer term. But the, despite all of this, despite a lot of the future growth in audio hardware being driven by these increasingly diverse use cases, audio quality does still remain really important. A again, back to our audio tech lifestyles research, 85% of respondents said that sound quality was important or extremely important in the headphone purchasing decision. And this was pretty consistent across the different form factors. Over ear was a little bit higher than this 85%. TWS was slightly lower, but still above 80%. It's clear that sound quality is still key. Smart speakers, we, we, we saw a, a similar phenomenon where 51% of smart speaker owners and intended purchases highlighted superior sound quality as the main feature they were looking for in their next purchase. And even smart displays where video watching really is a key use case. Superior sound quality was actually the top concern with 49% of respondents citing this. We also see strong awareness of the latest premium audio technologies. It's perhaps not surprising to see the 3D audio technologies such as Dolby Atmos and DTSX leading the way with 43 respondents aware of at least one or, or both of these technologies. Awareness of Sony's 360 Reality audio is, is quite impressive at 24%, considering that it is a reasonably new technology. And still over one in five respondents uh, were, was aware of high resolution audio. And we expect this to increase moving forward with more and more of the major streaming companies looking at integrating high res in some way. There, there, there do remain challenges with quantifying audio quality. Um, especially during COVID when it's much more difficult to try the products out. 
but but we're optimistic that in in the medium term this will be overcome with much with many more opportunities from these music streaming services a lot of these guys are looking at high res and that can only be a good thing for the industry we, we've also seen um pretty positive growth during the pandemic from traditional passive passive and active loudspeakers where audio quality is is kind of the the key selling point there and even more niche applications like turntables have actually done really well showing that people are spending more of their leisure time listening to higher quality audio than, than they were let's say a year before so the audio market has been a, a key growth category for ce over the last five or six years but we at future source believe that the next five to six years will be even more positive the pandemic has really shaken up the audio industry. We heard earlier about the challenges uh, around retail and the questions about whether consumers will continue to purchase online in, in the longer term and what the audio companies can do about that. As we're gonna hear more about tomorrow, the last few years in the, in, in the audio landscape have seen dramatic changes in, in brand shares in both home audio and in headphones. And again, this has been very much exacerbated by COVID. But COVID has also really demonstrated how crucial audio hardware already is to our day-to-day -day lives. And while there do remain all of these challenges, we continue to see huge opportunities moving forward throughout the audio landscape. It's a very positive picture for the next five years and even further beyond this with technologies such as hearables like we were hearing about earlier. This really is a great category to be in. Thank you very much.